Drawing cross sections is a basic requirement for most Earth scientists and we can explore how to do this using this elementary example where we've got surface geology shown by the colour strip along with these orientations of these sort of tadpole shapes which are the bedding orientations. The cross section template shows the landscape across which the geology has been observed as outcrop and it's displayed with a vertical scale and horizontal scale that are equal. The rock sequence is shown by this colour bar which has red, blue, orange, yellow, dark green and light green in ascending stratigraphic order. And we can see this stratigraphic order here as we go from the red, blue, orange, yellow, dark green, light green as we move from east, this right hand side, to west, this left hand side of the profile. Well, we're going to do this exercise twice. I'm going to show you, first of all, an approach that's commonly adopted by people who've yet to draw cross sections, and they tend to apply a very precise workflow or method uh, to help them get started. I'm going to compare that with an alternative approach afterwards. Well, let's start off with the first attempt. And a bit of warning, it's not going to work. So the idea is to try and project the surface geology into the subsurface and indeed into the sky where it's been eroded. And the only thing we've got to go on in terms of the direction that we're going to project boundaries is the bedding orientation shown by these tadpoles. Um, so what some people will do is they'll line a ruler up and rather carefully draw lines to show how the bedding apparently projects into the subsurface. Something like this. But we're getting some rather curious features happening here, aren't we? Which is these trajectories, they're fanning as you go down into the subsurface and they're crossing as you go into the sky, so they're, they're not parallel. Uh, and this would imply that if we took a boundary, for example, the uh, boundary between the yellow and the green and uh, put it like this, then the green here would be abutting against the blue by the time we got over into this area over here. So the approach like this, it's precise because we're very carefully lining our ruler up and projecting in a very precise way the dips into the subsurface. But as a consequence, we're generating a rather chaotic and very strange uh, sort of stratigraphic geometry in here in terms of how the rock units um, work together. Let's look at the key. And a simple approach would be to say that actually these layers originally, and we're going to use the ruler again, were essentially continuous away from our little log section here and continued to be more or less originally constant thickness. So if this was how we think the rocks originated as layered one on top of the other in a stratigraphic order and within our area of, of interest were more or less constant thickness, then by the time we get to our geometry on the cross section, we've broken this initial geometry. The layers are not constant thickness, indeed they converge or cross over one another. Uh, these crossovers make no sense whatsoever. So this approach, although precise, uses precision in a rather unthinking fashion and is taking us in completely the wrong direction. So let's have another go using a different approach. And here what we'll do is we're going to use this idea that the rocks were originally more or less constant thickness before deformation and the deformations just tilted them around but they'll still remain more or less parallel after the deformations occurred, and in which case these dips have been achieved. So what we're going to do is construct, and I'll just sketch them in, you could be more precise, but actually we'll just sketch them in. I'm constructing perpendiculars to the bedding orientations at the locations they exist, like that. Let's just go over them a bit more clearly so we can see them. There we go. So these are directions that are perpendicular to the bedding. And I'm now just going to sketch on some trajectories of bedding which are parallel to the measurements that are on the outcrop 
within these little normal lines like this. There we go. And this tells me what the orientation of bedding is, not what the rock unit is, but what the bedding is doing in the subsurface and in the sky as a projection of the readings that we see at outcrop. So all we need to do in terms of taking this orientation of the boundary here is to take it out into this trajectory here. We take this one down and arc it round. This one here goes through to there. This one here goes like that and will come round like this. Notice they're making concentric arcs and as a consequence in here the layer thickness is being maintained more or less, give or take my rather quick drawing, as we go around the section. Something like, it's a bit scruffy around here, like this. And let's just take these up, make that a bit further, up into the sky. And this now is developing into our cross section. Let me just colour it in. So that's a better job, I think. Basically, it shows the rock units continuing. Um, they obey the stratigraphic relationships we see in the key. Um, so that we're inferring the light green always sits on top of the dark green, in turn on top of the yellow, in turn on top of the orange, in turn on top of the blue, and finally on top of the red. And that occurs throughout the profile. So the message here is to project, as a first pass, the bed dips in a direction perpendicular to the bed dipping that we see at the location we see it, and then draw these little uh, guidelines. And we essentially shoot into these when we're drawing our boundaries around these arcs. So it's a simple illustration of the dangers of using precision without thinking very carefully of the consequences. A rather rough and ready approach makes a better cross section. Of course, we could add precision to this approach. And if we take that assumption of constant layer thickness, we could simply take this stratigraphic template and precisely plot it around these arcs to construct the continuous fold geometry. So that's a basic illustration of the importance of making clear-eyed decisions when you draw cross-sections or indeed when you do any other type of geological interpretation.